I just want to thank each and every one of you for being here tonight. Thank you for joining us here on our Bible study. We're just so grateful for each and every one of you. Hope you've uh, been having a tremendous week. And if not, be encouraged. God is going to make a way out of no way. Uh, we pray tonight that this study, this time as we study the word, would be helpful, that it would be beneficial, that it would be uh, fulfilling to strengthen you, to uh, encourage you, and to build you up in the most holy faith. And so we're going to jump in. We're going to get started. And I, I just want to encourage you to just prepare your hearts for what the Lord is going to say to you. And once he's done speaking to you, he'll begin to speak through you. I, I, I definitely, I definitely believe that. And so just thank God for all of you. I want to give people just a minute to file in and we're going to jump in. We're going to open in prayer and then we will begin. Tonight, as you can see in the title, we are, we are talking about tonight the benefits of the Bible, the benefits that the scriptures provide for us and um i think this is going to be helpful to us as we grow in the grace of god and as we seek the face of god it's important to emphasize the importance of the word of god and so that's what we're going to do tonight go ahead and hit the share button the like button let folks know that we are here that we're jumping into the word together uh so that they can be a part of the conversation it's going to be a good one it's going to be a good one tonight and so let us bow our heads and then we will pray. Father, we thank you tonight for um, this moment and this time that we can worship you and we can come before you and, and study the word together. And we pray tonight, God, that as we look into your word, help us to receive what you are saying. and Help us to glean from the scriptures what you have to say to us, uh, knowing the word to carry voice in our lives that we would hear from you through the word. And I pray that somebody would receive in this moment what they need, that somebody would receive in this moment something practical and meaningful that will strengthen them, that will bring healing, that will bring clarity, that would administer hope. Do your work, O Spirit of God. Have your way, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen so let's get started we want to talk tonight about the benefits of the bible the benefits of the word of god and i, and I think this is going to be um thing that will be a blessing to you um we are having some heavy rain here and we are claiming a uh, interruption free Bible study, but just be aware that we are uh, under some arduous weather, but we're, we'll believe in God. And so God forbid, if there's any interruption, that is likely why, but we believe everything will be all right. So we're going to talk today about the benefits of the Bible. God bless you, Sister Sheila. Thank you for joining. I see uh, Faye Dunn. God bless you, Georgia Thomas, First Lady. Dr. Ruth is here and people are making their way in. We want to talk tonight about the benefits of the word of the Lord. We want to talk about how can the Bible help us? Um, how can the Bible help you? How does the Bible help you? Um, and I think this is important because I think the word of God is something that many overlook. I think if you were to look at the surveys, um, the surveys that exist right now in reference to uh, who reads the scriptures, who reads the word of the Lord, you'll see that there has been a precipitous drop in the study of the word of God and just the, I don't want to say casual reading, but the faithful reading of the word. And so I think tonight it would be a good opportunity and it presents a good opportunity to really uh, talk about and discuss uh, the benefits that the Bible has and the word of God has in our lives. Um, and so I want to start here. Everybody has a unique story. Each of us, life and the experience thereof, it makes us unique. And that's why community is so important because you have people from different experiences in life uh, and you can learn from somebody else. You can grow 
from somebody else's experience. There's such a wide ranging experience that people have in life. The experience of life, it's, it's wide ranging. And so different people go through different things in different ways, in different capacities, some worse than others, some not as worse or as bad as, as, as others. And one of the unique things that the Bible does is that the Bible, the word of God, speaks to everybody. The word of God speaks to everyone, no matter where you are in life, no matter if you're rich or you're poor, no matter who you are, the word of God speaks to everybody. And so we want to just really emphasize tonight, we really want to emphasize the benefits of the word of God. I want to welcome Jennifer Jones. God bless you, my good friend Doreen. God bless you. Seeing people filing in, we thank you for joining us here. And so we're talking about the benefits of the Bible. And so your life is a unique experience all in itself. And the word of God is impactful in the sense that it speaks to all of our lives, no matter where we are, no matter what we're going through. No matter what we've been through, the word of the Lord speaks to it. And so irrespective of how unique your story is, irrespective of how unique your challenges are, the Bible has practical help and real help for you. And so let me start with this question. How has the Bible been a benefit to you? I, don't, I, want, I want to hear from you in the chat. How, how has the Bible been beneficial? What are, what are the benefits that you have experienced through the word of God? I want to give you a minute. What has been your experience? How has the Bible been a benefit to you? While everyone is typing there, welcome Evangelist Thomas, my dear mother. See, the Bible gives, the Bible has encouraged me, it's comforted me, convicted me, guided me. That's first lady Dr. Ruth says here, amen to that. Faye Dunn says the Bible gives me hope, peace, faith, and shows me God's character and love. Absolutely. That is a powerful benefit of the word of the Lord. It's a powerful benefit. And I want to encourage you as everyone is typing. If you, you know, if you read three chapters a day, three, you will, you will complete the entire Bible in a year. If you can just do three chapters a day, you will complete the entire scripture, Genesis to Revelation, in a year. And I want to encourage you today that if you haven't read the entire Bible beginning to end, I want to encourage you to go ahead and, and, and start. You know, people tend to read the People tend to read the, you know, the book of Psalms and Proverbs, and they jump over to the Gospels, then they go through some of the epistles, the book of Acts, then they kind of skip Revelation, because for some people, Revelation, the book of Revelation is kind of scary, you know, and then, and then they, they go back to the rotation of Psalms again, et cetera, et cetera. So I want to encourage you tonight, if you haven't read through the scripture in full, in totality, Genesis to Revelation, I want to encourage you, start, start today. Uh, you are going to have to go through the Pentateuch, which is Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and it will seem like eating vegetables by itself with no sauce <laughs> when you're reading through, uh, you know, all of the laws. But it is important when you're reading through all of the, all of the genealogies. But but it is important. So I want to encourage you if you haven't yet read through the entirety of scripture, I want to challenge you just to begin to do do so three chapters a day, including the weekend. Three chapters a day, you will get through the entire Bible in a year. I see uh, Uplifted Heart says that the benefits of the Bible, it keeps me in check, it comforts me, it reminds me of God's promises. Those are excellent benefits to the word of God. And I, and I want to just say here, one of the, I think one of, and, and, and it was said here, um, God bless you, uh, CD, God bless you, thank you for joining us. One of, one, one of the benefits for, one of the major benefits of the word of the Lord is hope. The Bible 
the word of the Lord ministers hope unto us. And what I love about the word is it ministers hope even in difficult times, even in difficult times. I see Jennifer Jones, God bless you. Uh, says the Bible tells us uh, to be anxious for nothing. And I've seen this uh, advice unfold. Amen. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. That is so true. The Bible is, and, 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 and that is kind of what the word does here in terms of giving us hope, in terms of leading us and guiding us and, and encouraging us not to be anxious. And one of the major benefits of the word of the Lord is that it gives us hope even in difficult times. I want you to turn with me to a book maybe you haven't read or you've rarely gone there, so you're going to have to find it right now if you're using an old school traditional Bible. Go to Lamentations chapter 3, we'll read verse 22 through 25. Lamentations, like Pastor Lamin, what? Lamentations, Old Testament, chapter 3, verse 22. And we're going to read through verse 25. Again, God bless all of you for joining. Hit that share button, the like button. Let folks know we are here. Amen. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 says this. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. And verse 23 says they are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. That's great. And you know what? Let's just a bonus verse. Let's go ahead and read verse 24. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him? I love that. This is, this is an example of a passage that gives us hope. It gives us hope. And this particular passage in the book of Lamentations, this wasn't written when Israel was on the mountaintop. This wasn't written when Israel, uh, this wasn't written, this was not written when Israel was, you know, going through the best years of their national existence as a nation. This was, the, this was the dark years. This was written during the difficult years. And yet, even in that season that Israel was in, the Lord had a word for them. And this is a power of the word of God. And this is for somebody, maybe you are going through a dark season. Maybe you are going through a difficult time. Like Israel was here in Lamentations chapter three, but even in their dark season, and even in their difficult season, the Lord had a word, a word of compassion, a word that garnered hope a word that ministered strength even in difficult times. And this is the importance of the word of God. I like what Evangelist Thomas said here, that the Bible has been a vital part of my spiritual growth and development over the years. That is, that, that is exactly what the word does. It develops us. It develops us and it brings growth. And so the word of the Lord, one of the major benefits or primary benefits of the word of God is that it ministers hope. It, it, it ministers hope. Now, which answers the next question, is the Bible designed to give us hope? Is the Bible designed to give us hope? How would you answer that question? Is, do, do you believe the Bible is designed for that, to give us hope? I see here, yes, and it is to guide us. Absolutely. The Bible is absolutely designed to give us hope. And I see, all, I see all the affirmative, yes, and I agree with you. And that's a question I ask because maybe there are people, you know, who read the word with different lenses. You know, different lenses can give you a different perspective. And I don't know how you read the word. There, 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 there are people who, have grown up in a Christian environment where their experience is very legalistic, it's very judgmental, and the word is used as a bludgeoning tool, the word of God is used as a vice, 
the word of God is used as almost like a straitjacket, and and maybe there maybe there has been emphasis on certain passages in the Old Testament, right? And and so therefore, the, there are people who can view the word as as a holy writing that doesn't give hope, but rather takes it. But it's important to understand that the Bible gives us hope, and I agree with you. Uh, newly wedded Doreen Bennett is my first uh, couple that I've ever married. So they hold a special heart, a place in my heart. And uh, Doreen says, I, I, I do believe that the Bible absolutely is designed to give us hope. I want you to look at some of these passages that, that, that agree with you. Look here at Romans chapter five, verse four. Romans 5, sorry, Romans 15, I apologize. Romans 15, verse 4. Romans 15 and verse 4. And a hearty congratulations to our sister Doreen Bennett. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We're, we're, we're reading Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. And hear what the Bible says here, for whatsoever things are written aforetime, of old time, Old Testament and so forth, for whatsoever things are written aforetime are written for our learning, watch this, that we through patience and the comfort of the scriptures might have hope, right? So the word here, it was written a four time. And this, and this is also what is powerful about the scriptures, that the, that the word of God was written thousands of years ago, and yet it is relevant to this very day. It is relevant to this very day. And this is, and this is what the scriptures are telling us here in Romans 15, verse 4. It says, what's for whatsoever things were written a four time were written for our learning. So the word of God is written for us to learn. In other, words, in, in other words, when we read the word, and I'm, I'm guilty of it, there's times where you're reading the Bible and you're just reading and then you stop and you say this and you say to yourself, what did I just read? <laughs> and then I got to go back and read it again. Why? Because I want to make sure that I'm learning. I want to make sure that I'm soaking in the word, that the word is speaking to me, that the word is doing its work in me. So the word is saying here in Romans 15, 4, that the word is written aforetime. It was written for our learning. And watch this, that we through patience, underline that word patience, and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So the word is written for our learning that we through patience. In other words, we got to be patient through the things that we are enduring, through patience and the comfort of the scriptures might have hope in other words there and in, in, in other words there will be seasons in your life where the only thing that will give you comfort is the word of god there there will be seasons in life when everywhere you look it is discouraging it is frustrating it is sad it is it is heartbreaking right it is heavy it's weighted it's burdensome but the word of god will be there to comfort you the word of god will be there to give you hope. I want to ask everybody in the chat, give me maybe an, a, give me an example or give me a direct scripture reference, you can paraphrase, that gives us hope. Is there a scripture that you can think about that gives you hope or has given you hope in times past? Is there any scripture that, you, that can come to mind and as you're typing that up, I see Minister Noel Thomas. You got to see his ministry. He'll, he'll be on uh, tomorrow. Uh, I'll definitely share it. You got to be a part of what, what the Lord is using him to do. Thank you for joining, brother. And he says, the word of the Lord is everlasting and eternal. That is a thousand percent true. And we see here, uh, Uplifted Heart refers to Jeremiah 29, 11. That is a powerful verse of hope. Oh man, that's that's some good stuff. J J Jeremiah 29, 11. We know that well. And the word there says, God says, I know, I know the thoughts I, I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil. Thoughts to give you 
a future and a blessed end. It's a powerful text that encourages us, that encourages us to understand the thought that God thinks towards us. And that scripture in particular is full of hope because there are so many individuals who believe that God's disposition towards them, that God's view of them is anger, is wrathful, right? Uh, 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 um, they believe that is, they believe that is, it, it is, it is wrathful. But here the word is telling us in Jeremiah 29, 11, God's God, and, and what's powerful about this verse, let me just park here for a second. What's powerful about this verse is that it starts off by saying, God says, I know the thoughts I think towards you. In other words, you may, you may be questioning God's thoughts towards you, but God is saying, I know what I'm thinking about you and thinking for you in terms of what I desire for your life. And it is, and he said, it is not thoughts of evil, but thoughts of good things. Amen. So that is a powerful verse that gives us hope. Evangelist Thomas here submitted John 10 and verse 28 that says, Jesus says, and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. That is a powerful verse of hope that, listen, if you're in Christ Jesus, he gives you life life beyond this mortal life, and you'll never perish, and, and, the, and, and the enemy cannot pluck you out of the hand of God. Oh, I see Ephesians 3.20, now unto him who's able, no, not that, no, 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 I'm, I'm thinking I'm, I'm finishing church. <laughs> we just getting started. Now unto, now unto him who's able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all we can ask or think, according to his power that is at work in the midst of us. That's a powerful verse. Listen, if you're in the chat, you can, you can go ahead and screenshot, uh, uh, you, 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 you can go ahead and screenshot uh, this, 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 uh, uh, the, the, the chat conversation, because you're going to want to go back to these, the, these scriptures. Uh, Faye Dunn submits uh, Matthew 6, God tells us, yes, that's it. That he takes care of the birds and the trees. And he says he will also take care of you. I love that. Absolutely. Uh, First Lady Dr. Ruth refers to Isaiah 66, verse 13. As a mother comforts her child, come on now. So I will comfort you and, and, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. That's a powerful, I don't know who needs comfort, but go ahead and read Jeremiah 66, verse 13. God is saying in your difficult time, God said, I will comfort you. When others are, when others abandon you, God is saying, I will, I will absolutely comfort you. I see Joshua chapter one, verse nine. Let's, let's read that last one. Joshua 1 verse 9, and, and y'all can feel free to keep submitting pastors because those passages may be for somebody. Uh, Joshua 1 9, have, have I not commanded you, God said, be strong and be of good courage, be not afraid, neither be, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. That is for somebody, and, and what's, 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 what's noteworthy about Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 this is where Israel was being challenged by obstacles. The, they were being challenged by obstacles and referring to their future. And the Lord sent a word, I've have I not commanded you? I've, have, have I not commanded you to be strong? And so in moments when you want to give in to weakness and discouragement, remember God has commanded you to be strong. I love that. Thank you, everybody, for your participation and your submitting of these passages. And so, and so right here is a perfect example, a perfect example in mass, how that the word of God gives hope. It gives hope. And so often people focus on other elements of the word, the, uh, what they try to position as discouraging elements. There frankly are no discouraging elements of the word, but, but, but people's perspective will tend to view the word in a, in a negative light. But as we've read in these passages, the word of God gives us hope. Let's read Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Romans 15, verse 13. Romans 15, 
Romans 15 and verse 13. Yeah, I love these passages. God bless you. Some great stuff here. Amen. Romans 15 verse 13 says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. The God of all hope. I want you to catch that. The God of all hope. And so when we talk about the word of God offering hope, when we talk about the word of God offering hope, it offers hope because the word of God is sourced from the God of hope. And so I want you to be encouraged tonight to walk in hope, live in hope, embrace the word, and allow the word of the Lord to minister hope in your life. Now, the question is, what makes hope possible? As we read the word, as we, as we read the word in our personal lives, what makes hope possible? And the answer to that is faith. Faith makes hope possible. I want you to turn to Romans chapter 4, verse 17. Romans 4, verse 17. It is faith. Now, the word hope in the scripture is another word for faith, but hope in our current day vernacular uh, is communicated in terms of something that we expect something that we desire that we may not have. We hope it arrives. We hope it works out. It kind of communicates, the way we use the word hope today, it kind of communicates um, uh, a type of unsurety. But in scripture, the word hope is defined as a healthy expectation of. It is you expecting it with confidence and with peace. And so the word of God gives us hope. And that type of hope, that type of expectation with confidence, right, that type of hope is born out of faith. It is possible because of faith. And listen to what the scripture says here about faith. For as it is written, this is uh, 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 Paul writing to the Roman church. He said, as it is written, I've made thee a father of many nations, referring to Abraham, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. And look at verse 18, who against hope believed in hope that me that he might in fact become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. Now this is good stuff that we need to unpack real quick. This is some good stuff that we that that we have to unpack. The word is saying here, Paul is teaching the Roman church, about faith. You see, it is your faith in God that births forth the hope that you have and sustains it until God manifests it. And it says here in, in Romans 4, 17, as it is written, I've made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope, this is verse 18 of Romans chapter 4, who, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. This is, this is referring to Abraham believing God, even though he was 90 plus years old, he believed God that he can still have a son in his old age. And, and the Bible says that he hoped against hope, or he who, who against hope believed in hope. In other words, the hope of the world that says, well, I don't know if, it's, if it can come to pass. He hoped against that doubt and he believed that he, might, that he might become the father of many nations. Watch this, according to that which was spoken. Don't miss this. Abraham in his day, he didn't have the Bible as the word of God. Abraham had the words of God. And he took what God said and he believed it. Now, for you and I, 
God has given us the Bible. That is our word of God. In the same way in which God spoke to Abraham, God speaks to us through his word. And so what this passage is showing us is that for us, as we read the word of God, there may be dead, just like Abraham's body was considered dead in his old age, just in, in, in terms of being able to bring forth children, just like Sarah's body was considered dead in her old age in reference to, give, um, in, in reference to bringing forth children, it says here, he believed God who quickens the dead. He believed God. He believed even God who can bring to life what is actually dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were and who against hope, who against the natural reality of the situation, who against hope, he believed in faith. He believed in what God promised that he might become the father of many nations according to that was spoken or translated according to the word. And so I want to encourage you today that when you read the word of God, when you open the word of God to read it, keep your, keep, keep your spiritual heart open to receive what the word is saying to you, to receive hope from the word that just like Abraham, you will, you will hope against hope. And I don't know, I don't, I don't know what you're believing for. I don't, I don't know what you need in your life specifically, but, but I can tell you as a matter of fact, that, that the word of God will speak to you. And all you have to do is believe the word of God. All you have to do is, is come in agreement with what God has said about you. And listen, and listen, if you want to know what God has said about you, go ahead and scroll through this chat and read all the scriptures that have been submitted in this chat. And you will and you will be able to paint a picture of what God has said about you, what God has already said about you regarding your marriage, what God has already said about you regarding your children, what God has already said about you regarding your situation. It is, listen, go up, go just just just, just go back. And scroll through this chat and you will see what God has said about you and it will give you hope and it will, it will galvanize and solidify and make unmovable your faith in, in your life. And so, the, and so the word of God gives you hope. The word of God gives us hope. And the powerful thing about hope and the powerful thing about faith is that hope and faith in God literally activates the supernatural in our lives. And, 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 and when we can embrace faith and walk by faith, it, it, it will literally activate the supernatural in our lives to manifest the very thing that we have faith regarding. Let's look at Hebrews 11 verse 1. Go to Hebrews 11, verse 1. The Bible gives you hope, and the Bible carries the capacity to bring into existence what is impossible, to bring into existence what simply doesn't exist. That's the power of the word. That's the power of the word. Look at Hebrews 11, verse 1. Make this your anthem. Make this your principal text. Make this your go-to, all right? Hebrews 11, verse 1. We, we, we've read this, but I really want us to consume this. I really want us to dive in and to consume this passage in our lives. Okay. The Bible says, faith is a substance of things hoped for, Faith is a substance of things hoped for. And faith, it is the evidence of things not seen. Now, faith is a substance of things hoped for. And faith is the evidence of things not seen. This is how we activate the supernatural in our life. We have faith. And the Bible right here is defining for us what faith 
is faith is the substance of what we hope for. Sub substance is something tangible. So in other words, faith in us, the faith that we live by, it, it is a substance and it is a substance of what we hope for. In other words, our faith is that tangible reality. And you may say, how can that be? Because when you have faith about something, you simply believe that it is, it, 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 you simply believe that it is done. That's why in our faith, when we have faith, we thank God ahead of time because we believe it's done. And we, and we just read about Abraham who believed in God, who speaketh those things that are not as though they were. Can I say that real quick? You need to begin to speak in your life what you expect to see. You, you need to begin to speak in your life what you are believing God for. Now, don't get messy and speak into your life things that God hasn't spoken over you. Don't be speaking somebody's husband over you as your husband. Don't be speaking somebody's wife over you as you were there. It, it, that ain't gonna work. But if we come in alignment with the word of God and we speak the word of God, that is how faith activates as a substance. And so faith is a substance of things hoped for. And then it says, our faith is the evidence of things not seen. And so when we are believing for something, our faith is that proof that convinces us that it is done. Our faith is the evidence that convinces us that what I'm praying for, what I, what the Lord spoke, what the Lord spoke to me about in the word, it's mine, it's done, it's complete. That's what faith does. And when you can have a mindset of faith, and when you can have a perspective of faith, and you take your perspective of faith, and you open the word, and you begin to read the word, you begin to read the word, and you read about how when Miriam and Aaron were gossiping about Moses, and God called them outside of the camp, and God called them out and said, why are you talking about my servant? And, and the Bible says that Miriam was leprous right away. And then we read prior to that, that when God was calling Abraham, God said, put your hand in your coat and take it out. And when he took it out, his hand was leprous. He was like, he said, what's going on? And then God said, put it back in. He put his hand back in and his hand was as new as a baby. It, that is to give us hope to know that God can heal anything in a in a moment. These are the things that gives us hope. And so when we read with a perspective of faith and we read something like that, it tells us, hey, if, if Moses can put his hand in his coat and, and he can pull it out and it's, it's leprous and he put it back in and he, he pulls his head and it's, it's not leprous, God, God can heal in a moment. And with Miriam, she had to endure that for a small season because of her gossiping. Right? So it teaches us that listen, God can do impossible things. It grants us hope. When you read the scriptures and 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 you read about Daniel and how he sat in a den of hungry lions all night. You know how it feels to be hungry. You know how it feels to be hungry, and, and you're sitting at the restaurant and the food is taking forever. And you want to walk in that kitchen and be like, what in the world is going on back here? I'm about to go cook my food myself in this kitchen. You're just hangry. Imagine being in a, imagine being in a lion's den with hungry lions. But yet in that moment, he believed God and, and the Lord shut the mouths of the hungry lions. And secular history tells us that when they pulled Daniel out of that lion's den, the king who found out that the evil intentions of Daniel's counterparts, he threw them in the lion's den. But what people miss is that when you read the actual history books of those nations, it tells us that when they put those men in the lion's den, they actually fed the lions so they were full. They fed them so that, so, so that they were full. They wouldn't even eat no more. And then they put those men in the lions. And, and, and the Bible says the lions tore them up. It gives us hope to know 
that when others plan negative things for your life, God will turn it around for your good. And God will defend you and bring shame to those. The Bible says God, the, the Bible says God will never let you be ashamed. And so when and so when when we can approach the word, when we can approach the word with faith in the forefront of our mind, and when when we can approach the word with a mindset of faith, the Bible, the word of God will minister unto us hope. And the consequence of that is when we read the word full of faith, the word of God will minister tangible works in us to manifest the glory and the miracles of God in our lives. So I wanna encourage you, read the word from a perspective of faith. Read the word. There, 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 are, there, there, there are things you need in your life Read the word and God will strengthen you. Now, what are some of the benefits of the Bible in a practical sense? The, the Bible is, 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 is powerful because, and it's important because it gives us practical wisdom. What are some of the benefits? What are some of the practical things you've learned in reading the word? Is there anything that you can think about that when you read the word, you said, you know what, that makes sense. It kind of gave you wisdom. It gave you practical understanding. What are some of these benefits? Can you think of any? What are some of the practical lessons the word of the Lord teaches? I want to give us a chance to just participate in that respect. What, what are some of the practical lessons? Wow, I, I just saw the comment by CD. Um, mm. Your friend was found, wow. Your friend was, wow, 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 wow. I just saw, we will definitely lift up a special prayer for you and and the, the family of that friend who was found, who lost their life. We will definitely lift you up in prayer tonight. Absolutely. Wow. Sorry to hear that, my friend. Oh, boy. May God comfort you and, and, and the family. Wow. I see here some of the lessons we learn here. Um, the practical lessons we learn here. Ha, money management and wisdom. That's, that's definitely in the Bible. Absolutely. I see here how to guard one's heart. Watch what I say. I have a heart of Thanksgiving. My wife says how to be a better manager, a better wife. All right. The Bible teaches all these things. Yes, absolutely. Parenting children, that's it. That's it. The Bible teaches us these practical lessons, right? And these are the benefits of knowing the word of God. Let's look at some of this. Look, Turn to Proverbs chapter 2. We'll read verse 6 through verse 8. Proverbs 2. Verse six through eight. And then we'll read that same chapter, but we'll jump down to verse 15 and 16. All right, so Proverbs chapter two, verse six through eight. And while you're turning there, it's, it's just good to see. We have Sister Sheila here from the found side family, Sister Audrey, Brother Roderick. I believe Sister Paulette as well. Just thank you all for being here tonight, along with everybody here on social media. God bless you on Facebook Live. So let, let's read here Proverbs chapter two, verse six. It says, for the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. 
He layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. I love this. The Bible has given us some practical uh, application here. That number one, this baseline understanding that the Lord gives wisdom and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and, and understanding. In other words, when you read the word and you when you read the words that God has left behind for us, it gives us wisdom. The, can you, uh, anybody in the chat, can you recall some passages that give wisdom and knowledge and good advice? I know one that says uh, uh, in Proverbs, he that keepeth his mouth or keepeth his tongue, keepeth his life. That, that, that's one of them. In other words, don't be quick to talk and try to try to de-escalate situations because de-escalating is better than escalating can save your life and i think that is true today because you know people uh people out there today are just on a different level and honking your horn at a car can cost you your life nowadays so you know there, there's, there's wisdom in 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 that any other scriptures that uh that you can quote or just refer to that it that gives practical understanding Verse seven, okay, somebody's referring to verse seven. Good to see Danita Apata, formerly Danita McLeod. She's now married, my baby sister. Thank you for joining us tonight. And if she's on, that means her husband is there too. God bless you both. Uh, uh, Proverbs chapter, uh, oh, Proverbs four, verse seven. Is that what you're saying? Proverbs four, verse seven. Let's go there. It says wisdom is a principal thing, therefore get wisdom with all thy getting, get understanding. Absolutely. God bless you, Joan. Thank you for joining with us tonight in our Bible study. We're talking about the benefits of the word of the Lord. The Bible is full of great practical advice. Let me give you one. Let's get Proverbs 15, verse 1. Here's one, Pro Proverbs 15, verse one. And I see as you're turning there, Faye Dunn says, um, and oh, Sister Merson, God bless you. Thank you for joining Sister Merson. Good to see you, my dear. Uh, Faye Dunn says, a feast is made for laughter. Wine maketh merry, but money answereth all things. Amen. If a feast is for laughter. I'll skip the part about the wine, but a feast is for laughter. Wine maketh merry, but money answereth all things. I see here from... Uh, the venerable fountainside church, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but a grievous heart stirs of anger. Yeah, that's, oh, sorry, yes, that's what I'm reading here in Proverbs 15, verse 1. It says here, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but a grievous, heart, grievous words stir up anger. Um, and even verse 2 says, the tongue of the wise useth knowledge all right, or to their benefit, but, uh, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Is, isn't that true? Have you ever been around a fool? You know, I don't call nobody a fool, but have you ever been around a fool? They just talk foolishness, just pure, bare foolishness, right? And the Bible is giving us wisdom saying for us, let us use our tongue wisely. Let us use knowledge in, in a beneficial way, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Amen. Amen. That is that is a good one. Look up. Let, let, let's go to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7. The Bible gives us practical knowledge. It gives us hope. The Bible, the word of God births forth faith out of us, out of our lives. And the word of God also gives us practical, meaningful knowledge. It says a man in, in Proverbs 16, verse 7 says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies be at peace with him. I love that. And that's so true. When you walk with the Lord, you'll find that people who should hate you will, <laughs> will end up being a blessing to you. 
And then look at Proverbs chapter 8. I mean, sorry, Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 8. Look at the next verse. It says, better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. That's practical. It's saying that it's better to be, it's, it's better to keep your morals. It's better to hold on and it's better, it's better to keep your moral compass attached than to throw away your morals to get money and to get rich. Some important lessons because there are people who will get rich and throw away all morals. They will literally throw their soul out the window to be rich. And let's go ahead and read verse nine because verse nine is extremely practical as well. Proverbs 16, look, the, the word of God is powerful. The, the word of God has so much in there for us. In Proverbs 16 verse uh, nine, it says a man's heart deviseth his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. Tell me in the chat, what does, what does Proverbs 16 verse nine teach us in a practical sense? What does Proverbs nine, Proverbs 16 verse nine teach us in a practical sense? What does it teach us when it says here, a man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directs his steps. I see go, go to God for direction. I like that. The, the, the Lord's will will be done. I love that. Amen. That's good. I like that. And I said, we need God. I love that. That's it. Absolutely. I want to add to that what everybody is saying. It specifically says, a man's heart deviseth his ways. I see here, ask God before we make any move. Don't lean to your own understanding. That's what this passage is saying. It's saying that we will devise our own way. You know what? I'm going to go to this college and I'm going to do this, or I'm going to try to get this job and do that, or I'm, I'm, I'm going to move to this city and do this. We can devise our way. We can plan and map out our way, but the Lord directs our steps. And what that teaches us is that even as we plan out our lives, we must seek God for his direction. Just because I want to do a thing, it doesn't mean God wants me to do that thing. Just because I want to go a certain way and I may desire to go a certain way, it doesn't mean that I need to go that way just because uh, uh just because I may want to marry a certain person, it doesn't mean that, that that's God's will for you to marry that person. And so you can devise your way, but it is important to allow God to direct your steps. Why? Because when God directs your steps, nobody can stop where you're moving. When God is going before you, if, if anybody makes the mistake of getting in your way, they will do so to their own peril. Because when God is directing your steps, success is guaranteed to follow. And so it's important for us. That's why it is important for us to seek God's, as, as everyone said in the chat, seek the will of God. Lord, my heart's desires for this. Father, what do you desire for me? Lord, lead me and guide me. And God, if this is not your will, make it clear to me, O oh God. And, and you allow God to lead you and allow God to, to direct your steps. Because here's the truth. The path that you want to walk in five years, it may be desolate, but God is leading you in a way that maybe right now doesn't look the most attractive, but in the long term, it's where you need to be. God will direct your steps. The Bible also gives us more practical understanding. The Bible even gives us helpful advice in terms of work, in terms of uh, uh, employment, and and even life success. Go to um, we're 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 coming down now. Go to Proverbs chapter six and verse six. And while you're going there, you can hit that like button, hit the share button. This is some good stuff. Proverbs six and verse six. It teaches us about life success. And the Bible says this in, 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 uh, in Proverbs 6, and, and we'll read down to, uh, to verse 11. It says, go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her way and be wise. 
which having no guide or no overseer or ruler provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. Oh, and it says, how long wilt thou sleep, O slugger? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little slumber, or sorry, yet a little sleep and a little slumber, like a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth and thy want as an armed man. And so the Bible is teaching us here, go look at an ant. And the Bible calls the reader a slugger, a lazy person. So, so the Bible is saying, don't be lazy. Consider how diligent an ant prepares. Consider how diligent the ant works and labors to be prepared in the summer for the winter. And so it is teaching us to do our best and to put our best foot forward. And look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. The Bible gives us some more practical advice. It says, he that becometh poor dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. Right? So the Bible is saying, look, you, you got to put your, you got to go to work. You, you can't expect to, to be successful if you don't put in the work. So the Bible teaches us so much in a practical sense. But the most important thing that the Bible teaches us above all else, because learning about life is important, but learning about eternal life is more important. Learning about life is important. The one consistent theme that the scriptures teach us, it is to serve God, is to give our life to him. We know this passage and we will, and, and we will wrap it up here in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but shall have everlasting life. For the Bible says, God sent not his son into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That is what the word teaches us. The most important lesson. So I want to encourage you tonight. Embrace the word of God in your life. As I said, as I said at the outset tonight, three chapters a day will have you read through the entire Bible in a year. And so get to work. Start with the book of Genesis. God, God has given us the entirety of scripture for a reason. And so, it is, and so it is important for us to read everything God has left for us. I'll tell you one thing as we close. The most impactful part of the Bible for me is the life of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the life of Joseph, the life of Moses. You learn so much about God from how these individuals interact with God. You learn so much about what God expects from us as you read about how, read about the interaction between these men of God. It taught me so much about God. Don't skip the Old Testament, y'all. There is, there is, there is some good stuff. You know how you got the good stuff at the bottom of the soup? That's what the Old Testament is. That's the good stuff. You got to get down there and you have to get into it. And, and you will learn so much from the scriptures. You know, my mother is here and I, and I, and I, and I got to testify. The greatest gift, the greatest gift I'd ever, I'd ever received when I was 16 my mother bought me a uh, Nelson New King James Study Bible. And, the, and it had the New King James Version at the top portion. And the bottom portion, it had like commentary with Hebrew definitions. And when I got that Bible and started to not just read the word, but study because it gave me understanding. It gave me knowledge. It gave me Hebrew language. It gave me, why did Abraham do this? Why did, why did the apostle Paul say this? Uh, and and, and it, it just blew my mind. And my knowledge of God exploded just out of that Bible. The word of God changed my life. The word of God changed my life and it can change your life too. And so I want to encourage you, get in the word. 
get in the word, get a good study Bible. I, I subscribe to the Nelson study Bible, new King James version. It is powerful, powerful tools are in there to help you grow and understand the word of God. And so that's all we'll cover for tonight. But I want to encourage you to get in the word, allow the word to minister to you hope. And be patient and trust God. And, and as you read the word, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. And the word is powerful in that the word of God, sometimes the word of God will encourage you. Sometimes the word of God will correct you. It'll tell you about yourself. There are times where I read the word, I'm like, oh, the Bible talking about me, the Holy Ghost talking to me about me. Maybe my attitude, maybe, uh, maybe my, maybe, I had a conversation with my wife and I, and maybe I should have had a, a, a better attitude. The Bible convicts me of that because I'm reading and, and something in there jumps out to me and says, oh, see, you got to do better. That's the power of the word. The word keeps us on point. It keeps us sharp. It keeps us ready for his return. And so, so be encouraged tonight, get in the word three chapters a day and let the Lord have his way. We want to pray. And as I said earlier, we want to pray a special prayer for a CD who is, who's uh, grieving the loss of a good friend who was found murdered. Uh, and so we just want to pray for you, and then we will we will close in prayer. Father, we just lift up our brethren tonight who are struggling grieving the loss of life. We pray for CD and we pray for those who have been impacted by this devastating loss. Father, only you can comfort the way you can. And we recognize that there are no words sufficient that would comfort to eliminate all pain and to wipe away all tears. But we pray, oh God, that you would comfort him, comfort that family, Comfort them tonight. Comfort the, 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 the mother, the, the fathers, the friends. Comfort them, oh God. Comfort them by the power of the Holy Ghost. And step in the midst of them, oh God, to reveal yourself and to bring, and rather to begin the process of healing. And so, Father, we pray, we pray a divine covering over that family. We pray your covering over CD tonight. Minister, O Spirit of God, right now. Strengthen them, O God, and cause them to embrace the memories, the good memories. Oh God, help them, we pray. Cover them now. And for those who do not know you, may even this moment be an opportunity to see you, to turn to you and even to serve you. And so be with them, God, show them your love, show them your comfort and be with them, we ask. In Jesus' name, we all say, amen and amen. And Father, we thank you for the, the time that we can spend tonight in your word. And I pray God for your people, help us to embrace the word, help us to discover the promises in your word that would heal our bodies. Help us to discover the promises in your word that would rid our mind of depression and thoughts of suicide. Cause us to find in your word the answer to what we need for the season that we are in. Anoint your word to speak to us. Anoint your word to correct us. Anoint your word to transform us. Anoint your word to deliver us. Spirit of God, as your people read the word, cause your word to move as a mighty force in their life to bring forth change in the name of Jesus and cause them to arise dripping with your anointing. Oh, enveloped in your power, cause them to arise armed and ready to tear down the kingdom of hell. Cause them to arise ready to fight and to walk in dominion and in total possession of the promises that you have made to us. We look to you now and we thank you for doing it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you for joining us. 
on behalf of the Fountainside family, Sister Sheila, Sister Audrey's here, Brother Roderick, on behalf of First Lady Dr. Ruth, we just want to thank you for joining us tonight. And listen, if you're in the if, if you're in the Florida area, come on down to Fountainside Church of God. We'd love to have you. 7020 Pines Boulevard here in South Florida, Pembroke Pines. We'd love you to worship with, love for you to worship with us. And if not, join us uh, at you can join us on Facebook Live at one o'clock, or you can go to our, our our Fountainside YouTube channel where all of our ministry content is available uh, at no charge for you. So just go ahead, subscribe, jump on there. And uh, I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. Listen, we love you. We thank God for you. And listen, we are we are going to be having our monthly discussion coming up the last Thursday in August. It's going to be Thursday the 31st. Uh, we're going to surprise you with the announcement here in short order. So just uh, just just get ready for that. It's going to be a, it's going to be a tremendous time. It's going to be a conversation. It's going to be a conversation you don't want to miss. And so uh, we're excited, extremely excited about that. We love you. God bless you. And Lord Terry's will be back with you next week. Remember, get in the word. God has something to say to you. Have a great evening. Take care.